Hey, welcome back, Black Lions and families. Uh, appreciate you tuning in as we answer some of these questions today. As you'll see, I'm, I'm rolling solo today. Um, the other day when I mentioned the comment about uh, relaxed grooming standards, I think the Sergeant Major had a mild heart attack, uh, so we had to put him on quarters for 24 hours. Uh, that, that is a joke. Uh, he, is, he is fine. Uh, but I have Lieutenant Blevins here that's helping me out, asking some questions. And before we get started, I do want to give a shout out to Aaron Blevins. Uh, just joined the task force really a couple weeks ago. And then uh, during our officer onboarding, uh, he mentioned that he was into videography. He's got some really great equipment. And, uh, and then when this crisis kind of kicked off, uh, I asked Aaron to step up and be our unit public affairs rep full time. Um, and, and he's done a tremendous job. You can see the, the quality of the videos are getting better. We're getting more sound effects and everything else. It, it's really amazing. And I appreciate uh, what Lieutenant Blevins is doing for the task force and hoping to keep you all informed. All right, so with that, let's go with the first question. Sir. When can we expect orders to be amended for soldiers that are set to PCS during the May through July timeframe in 2020? Yeah, so hey, hey Sergeant P, thanks for that question. Um, the short answer is we don't know, all right? What I'd ask you to do is, uh, is stay in touch with your assignment managers. Uh, I'm sure they're getting guidance through the HRC channels as to when they need to start turning those orders back on. But what will I ask, what I do ask for everyone is, hey, kind of temper your expectations, right? and have an appreciation for the massive problem set that not only the Department of Defense as a whole is gonna go through uh, coming into this summer, but also the moving companies that are out there, right? And all those transportation offices. Uh, it's a massive problem set. There was a lot of people that should be moving between March and May, and potentially this gets extended out, uh, that, that aren't doing that in, in those time frames. So once the, the faucet gets turned back on, uh, there's gonna be a lot of people that, that wanna get out of here and wanna get moving on to their next assignments. And you have to understand, I'm sure the Army is going to prioritize certain groups uh, first, uh, probably those that are going to PME and some other things as well. So just temper your expectations. If you think you're moving on May 12th, you might want to start consider thinking in terms of maybe July or August. All right. And I don't want to, there's nothing I'm hearing right now that, that says that's a fact, uh, but that's just kind of prudent thinking. Sir, why are soldiers with newborn babies still reporting to work, putting their family at risk? Yeah, so... Um, First of all, that question is kind of near and dear to me for, for one reason here. So Lieutenant Blevins uh, is a father of a three month old. So uh, I respect the fact that by him coming down here every day, uh, there's a little bit more risk involved than just uh, if he was gonna stay in his house all day, all right? But let me tell you what we're doing at work here. All right, so first of all, there's only about uh, 12 to 15% of the task force that's coming in on a daily basis to do work. And it's not that all 15% are together, right? We've got folks that are running the uh, control points out there at Harmony Church. We've got our staff duty platoon that's spread out as well. Uh, we've got some folks that are doing the um, doing the, uh, the courtesy patrols around Fort Benning. So they're not all on top of each other by any means. Um, so we are doing good physical distancing while we're here at work as well. If your soldiers coming in, I'm making the assumption they're coming in for a mission. They're coming in for a task. They're coming in for a reason, okay? And so they're coming in to get that done and then they're going back home. And then while they're here, they're executing good physical distancing, all right? And if they're not, employ your soldier to do that and, and, and empower them and tell them, hey, look, if somebody's coming into your space, you know, by all means, you know, tell them, hey, man, just, just stay back. I got a young kid at home, um, you know, and I don't want to increase my risk, all right? I'll be honest, I have to make usually about two to five corrections a day myself. Typically, it's a staff duty desk because they like to sit on each other's laps in there or something crazy, or it's the basketball court out here, right? And sometimes it's not even our soldiers that are out there but there's still some soldiers that think that playing basketball is okay. Okay, so tell your soldier, hey, I expect you to be executing good physical distancing at work and doing all those other things that the CDC recommends. Sir, why does curfew only apply to barrack soldiers? <laughs> hey, uh, so when I answered this question the other day, um, I, I did kind of scratch my head about, you know, why is it only barrack soldiers? So the good news is, uh, Specialist Morris, I think it's Specialist Morris, um, so uh, with the updated restriction of movement, um, I, I just put in a couple of additional restrictions on top of general order number one. And one of those restrictions is that curfew does apply to all task force soldiers regardless of residency. Sir, how does the executive order from the Georgia governor affect our organization in daily operations? Yeah, so the, really the short answer is it, it doesn't, right? So we fall under minimum basic operations and, uh, and, and from what General Gudo stated uh, the other day, uh, as he talked about it to the uh, Fort Stewart community is that uh, mi military and federal employees are, are exempt 
which really means you can move from your place of residence down to down to your work, right? Uh, so I'm gonna make an assumption that if you're coming to base, you're coming from off post, all right, you're in uniform, right? Because you're coming down to do something, so you should be in uniform. And if you happen to get stopped by local law enforcement, you obviously show them your ID card, uh, you're in uniform, and, and you should be able to proceed on to, on to work, okay? Sir, what are, what are our options since the gyms are closed, such as Beaver Fit accessibility? Yeah, so uh, that's why we're out here today to kind of show uh, that, that we do have the two gym in a box, um, uh, Beaver Fits, and they are uh, they're ready to be used. Okay, so it took us a little while to kind of figure out how we're going to do the accountability, and more importantly, how are we going to clean um, th th this equipment. So process is you go to staff duty. You got two keys, one for each, because we got one over by the basketball courts and one over by the coughs. Uh, you check out a key, you'll sign through the equipment that's in there. The cleaning supplies will be inside the beaver fit. So when you open it up, the first thing you should do is wipe down that equipment that you plan to use. Okay, and I'm telling you to wipe it down on the front end because we can't guarantee the person that, that used it before you wiped it down properly, okay? So space yourself out. I don't want to see folk trotted around the beaver fit. I can understand if you got somebody that needs to spot you, be careful about how you breathe. All right, and, uh, and make sure you clean off the equipment before you use it and then put everything back. But the beater fits are open for business and uh, those weights in there can't wait to get picked up and put down many times over. Hey, thanks for what you do. Um, I'm about to do another video here real quick that kind of talks about the uh, restriction of movement and how we're gonna change that to align with general number one. Uh, get out there and hunt with the pack.